Hi, I'm Al Dayer, coming to you from Mickey's Bait and Tackle in North Syracuse, New York. And today, we're going to tie an interesting fly for the winter edition of Lake Ontario Outdoors. And uh, I would advise all of you anglers out there to go and try this fly during the winter steelhead run on the Salmon River or any of your Lake Ontario tributaries on those dark, overcast, sullen days when uh, you're out there freezing your fingers and the rain's coming down on you. And um, try this pattern. The interesting thing about this pattern, it was inspired to me by a jig, of all things. Of course, what is a jig? I mean, let's face it, a jig is a weighted streamer. It's like the chicken and the egg kind of thing. We're an Oneida Lake shop. We cater to the Oneida Lake walleye angler, and this place has been here a long time. And I remember back in the 80s, the most popular colors for fishing jigs for walleye on Oneida Lake were your chartreuses, your greens, your lighter colors. Uh, the water was awful, awfully, uh, it was stained in a way. Uh, it was a coffee-colored water. And I imagine the black and purple would have worked okay, but for some reason that chartreuse was the number one seller. And then in the late 80s, early 90s, the zebra mussels came into focus. And what happened was the water cleared right up. It's in some instances, it's in certain areas, at certain times of the year, it's gin clear. And if you're a walleye angler, you realize that walleye are nocturnal by nature, very light shy creatures. So they will seek out those darker areas and deeper weed infested waters or uh, structure infested areas where it's dark and they feel safe. And the best color that shows through in dark conditions, even when the water's clear, is purple, your purple violets, blacks, indigos, blues. It's, it's the color scale, you know. Uh, so this was the inspiration for this pattern, this black and purple jig, which is probably accounts for 75% of the jig sold to the Oneida Lake walleye angler. I said, so why not do a fly, a trout fly, or the salmon steelhead fly, or a streamer even, that, that has those colors? And uh, you don't see a lot of trout flies of that color. You see a lot of steelhead flies of that color. But the bass fishermen use purple colored worms and purple colored stick baits for the walleye anglers. That, that's one of the top colors for them too as well. The so let's steelhead version that I tied. And I'm gonna do next the streamer version. You wanna tie these in both wet flies and you wanna tie them also in streamer patterns. And we're, we selected about a 5XL long hook. We'll put that in the vise. It's probably about a number six, which is kind of good size, but just for illustration purposes, I'm using a about a six aught black thread, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is establish that thread. The first thing I'm gonna do is put my cheaters on. Jeez. All right, get those babies established. Okay, we'll cut the thread. Okay, we'll cover the shank of that hook with the, with the thread. And for the tail of this pattern, I'm using golden pheasant tippets. Okay, beautiful, beautiful golden pheasant tippets, normally associated with the royal coachman. Okay, I think that's what the most popular use of this feather is. Pull one of those babies out there. All right. And then we'll just get that tail just like that. It's bright, bright black and sort of an orange, pumpkin orange right there that in there. Let's get that established. Right. And you want to wrap the whole stem right down the shank of that hook. This way you've got a nice even body when you go to put your floss body in. All right. And the next thing we're going to establish is some gold holographic tinsel. All right. Try to stick to the actual uh, components as close as you can for this pattern. You can substitute if you don't have holographic, just use regular gold tinsel. But try to try to stick to the genuine article if you can, as best you can. Get that established just for now. Okay, and that's going to trail off to the to the rear. And then the next material is going to be the floss body. Now this four strand floss that we're all accustomed to using, boy is it stuff just a nasty, nasty, unruly thing. And in order for me to tame it, get the four strands to act like one strand, what I, I, what I do is I take a piece of wax, and you're not gonna believe where this wax came from. It came from a cheese ball, like a Gouda cheese ball. It has the right stickiness and temperament for doing this sort of thing. And I run that floss through that wax, and it just creates one strand for me. It's so much easier to deal with 
when you do that. Year, for years, fly tires used wax uh, in their tying operations. There you go. That's so much easier to deal with now. If you're going to use light colored flat, uh, floss, don't use a dark colored wax. You try to find a lighter colored wax. But in this case, the body being black floss, it's okay to use that darker wax. So I'm going to get that established right in the middle like that. And then we're going to begin to wrap our body. Okay. And here's what we do. We start by wrapping in the middle. And we want a elongated sort of a torpedo shape. I'm going forward with this. Okay. I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to go back again rearward over my previous wraps. Hopefully you'll see the logic of this as it begins to form. And we'll go back this way. And we'll stop there. And go forward again. And what I've created is, is kind of like a bulge in the middle because that's where I started. Okay. And you got to leave enough room for the throat and the head of this fly. And we're going to go back again over the whole operation one more time. You can kind of see that torpedo shape. Instead of just a flat you know, cylinder of sorts, cylindrical, that's the word I'm looking for. We're giving it a sort of a, a torpedo look to it. All the way to where the tinsel will begin to wrap forward. Then we wrap the remaining. Boy, I cut just enough floss for this. I better get going quickly here. I'm running out of floss. There we go. Perfect. Oh, man. All right. Could have given myself a little more leeway. There, I had to sort of make wide turns. <laughs> there we are. Now we just tie off the floss. Okay. And then we'll cut the remainder of the floss. Get in there. Okay. Perfect. Get rid of that. Grab wrap that down okay now we begin to wrap our tinsel and I always counter wrap the tinsel so I'm gonna to wrap towards me when I create this rib from this holographic gold and you want to give it an angle you don't, you don't want to use too many wraps you want to get kind of just enough space between those wraps to really let that black uh, floss body show and then we'll just I like counter wrapping uh, tinsel bodies I always have I think that's a great way to reinforce the floss body too as well so it doesn't come apart. Tinsel not only provides the shine but it also provides a certain degree of reinforcement. Okay we'll get that there. Now the throat of this pattern is a beautiful sort of a kingfisher blue saddle and blue really stands out in those dark environs and we're going to make a beard out of this get rid of some of that fluff. We're going to tie this in by the tip Okay, and we're going to use the traditional tied down bird, uh, beard version for this pattern. There's so, so many different ways you can actually formulate a beard. I'm going to actually wrap this hackle, my hackle pliers, and as I wrap I'm kind of sweeping back a little here. That's why it's so much. It's so important to leave room for the head of this fly. There's a lot going on here because you're going to add a wing still. One more, maybe. Okay, that should do it. And then we're going to tie that off. All right. And we're going to get rid of that stem. I tied that in by the tip. Now we have all this hackle going everywhere. Now we take it and we bunch it up in our fingers as best we can, uh, stroking it downward. I'm almost kind of rolling it between my fingers in a way just to get it to behave properly. Once I get it all bunched up down and pinched, I can take that thread and go over it two or three times. And there's your beard. Okay. There's the beard of that fly. Okay. Now it's just a matter of putting the wing together. And when doing it, we have two parts for the wing. We have a underwing of the larva lace angel hair. And it's important to me, anyways, to, gr to try to get as close as you can to this particular color. It's the purple slash blue, the angel hair. There's different companies that make angel hair, but try to get one that is a real purpley, sort of a bluish 
texture to it. Or you, if you have to substitute, you could use a lot of different forms of mylar. You could use flashaboo, which this essentially is flashaboo. Or you can use crystal flash even. But try to get something that's going to match a purple and blue. That's what I'm going to do for my wing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double that up. Okay, like that. And uh, this is kind of difficult to deal with this stuff. Okay, I like tying it right in the middle like that. Okay, give it a couple of wraps like that. And then what I'll do is I'll pull it back, sort of doubling it. Okay. And then I'll tie it off again some more to get it to behave properly. Now I have to trim it. Right about there. Okay, that's the underwing. All right. Now we do the top wing. And what I like to do for the top wing is a bright purple. We use whatever purple you've got, but if you can find a brighter color purple, Raymond C. Rump does a nice dye job with the brighter purple, and I believe uh, Wapsie also has a nice bright purple calf tail. This might be a rump, I'm not sure. But you want to measure a wing out of that. Okay, right about there, maybe. And then I'm going to cut that close to the port. Okay. And then pinch that between your fingers. Get rid of some of the fluffy stuff at the base. Pull that right out. Get rid of some of that. You don't want that wing to be too bulky. It takes all the short, when you pinch it between your fingers like that, and you do one of these, it gets rid of a lot of those short fibers. And what you're left with is a more perfect wing, in my opinion. There we go. Now there's that one. It, wanna, it sort of has a natural curvature to it, doesn't it? Okay. That's going to go right on top, just like that, up top of that blue and purple angel hair. What I'll do is I'll wrap once around the butt section, like that, and then come down nice and gently with my thread at first, nice and gently, not too tight, and give it a couple more loose wraps. Now I'll look at it, and I want to position that wing so that it just rides right above everything I've just tied. Not having it go off to the side one way or the other. So once you find that it's in position, it's in perfect uh, alignment with the body and every, in, the, in the, uh, the first underwing, then you can now begin to wrap it tighter knowing that you've sealed the deal. Okay? There. And then I'm going to take my scissors, keeping this pressure on the wing pinch between my fingers, I'll go right inside like that and just cut that. It helps to have serrated scissors whenever you're dealing with hair. And then we're going to form the head of this fly. There's a couple errant pieces of tinsel, but it's not a big deal. All right, so we're going to form the head of this fly. This is a sprout streamer hook, about a size six. Okay, and then what I do is we have to whip finish with the Mattarelli whip finish tool. And then we'll just get rid of that. Okay, and there she is, the finished product. And earlier, I tied some wet fly steelhead versions of this pattern, okay, as you can see. So you can tie this in both a streamer, you can tie it in a wet fly for trout, you can tie it in a wet fly for streamers. Great pattern, it shows up in dark water conditions, even in cloudy water conditions it can be used. But I like using it when it's overcast, where those fish are seeking those dark places for sanctuary. They seem to be able to detect this pattern. And when you watch it come through the water, you'll know what I'm talking about. Hey, thanks for being here at Mickey's Bait and Tackle and for Lake Ontario Outdoors I'm Magazine. I'm Al Dare. Take care. Day.